I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. The time is 6.30 p.m. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes of our last meeting, March 18th. How much should we approve the minutes of March 18th? I can second, yeah. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. All right, our first order of new business is the Bartlett Tree Donation. Yeah, we have Colin Burke from Bartlett Trees. Do you want to talk? You want me to? I, I can talk. I can get, <coughs> do whatever. Um, basically, um, you know, what, what we were wanted, wanted to do was um, we have some services that we offer that uh, would benefit the, the buttonball tree here at the Sycamore. Um, and we we're willing to donate um, those services. Um, and so I had reached out to Jeff last week and, and he had asked me to, uh, to mention it to the select board. Um, the services that we are, um, you know, offering would be a program called Root Invigoration. Um, it's a process where we um, air mix, compost, biochar, um, upper soil amendments into the uh, critical root zone mm -hmm. uh, of the tree, which is about 10 feet from the base of the tree. Um, and then we apply a, a, a layer of mulch. Um, that helps helps trees kind of cope with the different environmental stresses that we've been dealing with. Um, I know there's just some construction done around the tree a couple of years ago, um, so that would also help in, in that situation. The second thing would be soil care. Um, we would want to um, do some soil samples and put together a prescription fertilizer for that tree, um, which we would apply once a year. Um, and again, this is all, all donation, just. Those are what we're, we're hoping to do for the tree. Um, we've done these, you know, we've, we've done this quite a bit. Um, there's research behind it saying that it helps trees. Um, and that's just something that we're kind of hoping to do and get your permission to do. So has that tree ever been mulched around it? I don't believe so. Um, you know, there's there's a kind of a, a, a leaf layer behind yeah. it, but I, I've never seen a, a mulching on it. So is that what you're talking about when you say mulch, like putting? So yeah, basically it'd be, we extend about 10 feet out from the base of the tree in a circle around the base of the tree. And mulch would be the final product. We would put yeah. down, we'd air mix some, some products yeah. into that and then mulch it. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just curious, and again, because you do mulch way more than I do, there's not gonna be problems with like that mulch washing onto the sidewalk and creating um, I, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, you know, if it was an issue, um, you know, we'd have to maybe put some, you know, edging to help hold it in place. Yeah. Generally when we, when we, uh, put a mulching on a tree, we do, um, we do put an edge. Sometimes that edge, you know, gets, gets washed out and things like yeah. that. But, um, usually on a flat surface, we don't really have too much of an issue with it. Yeah. No, I'm just. You know, curious, yeah. you know, because trying to think of potential issues from, you know, because I think it's great that you're willing to do this and, it, you know, it's it's a wonderful donation. I'm just, you know, trying to think about what the nearby people, you know, or the people walking on that sidewalk and stuff, if they'll have debris on the sidewalk. That's all. Yeah, I mean, it, it is pretty close to the sidewalk. Right, would be. yeah, so that um, that was my only thought on, on the mulch. But, again, I don't think that stops us from doing it. I think it just... Do you know how far we are from the sidewalk on the front? Is it 10, more than 10 or 12? Or I don't... Yeah, no. uh, the sidewalk would kind of compete. That would be the limit? have to do a little bit. It wouldn't be a full circle. Okay, so um, it's closer than that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's think... spots where it's under 8 feet, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, yeah, the majority of the work, it would kind of be um, behind the tree and, and on the side. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Um, so, Colin, did you have any conversations with the property owner nearby, or do you want us to? Because I, 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 I just want to not have any conversation. Okay. This all started with just contacting George Emery, yeah. um, and then he had, yeah. um, you know, told me to contact you guys, and so... I, I haven't had any conversation. We can have a side conversation about who, if you want me to do that. Um, but for the select board, as a donation, the select board needs to accept the donation. Yeah. So you have to vote to accept it if you want it. So that's yeah. why I, I asked. I, I motion we accept the donation from Partlet Tree for work on the button ball tree. Second. 
All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank we really you. appreciate it. It's, it's, it's a wonderful nice thing. Response. We really yeah. appreciate well, it. You have some pamphlets here about the group. Oh, great. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, it is an absolute uh, landmark in town, and we are very it's fond awesome. of it. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all want to see it la last many, many more years. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. Thank you very much. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Uh, that is that. Next up, we have the uh, 375 Hadley Road APR project. Yes. So... 375 Hadley Road, the property is currently in APR. The property owner has requested to put some greenhouses on. Um, the, it, they are within the requirements of the state. The state signed off on adding the structures. Um, CONCOM reviewed the location at their last meeting, didn't find any wetland resources within 100 feet. Um, and said way outside the 200 foot riverfront area. So um, as part of the APR process, when there's a change to the property, the select board uh, would need to vote. So uh, do you have any questions about the project or? I so the um, APR folder on our SharePoint mm -hmm. has the button ball tree stuff in it. And then the button ball one is. Sorry. No, but was this on, I thought it was on, we had it last month, last week. APR? Yeah, no? I don't think so. All right. I don't know. I'm In my head, I'm... We had a couple it. APR a few weeks, like January maybe, when we had the Castrol Trust come in. I just thought I had seen plans with the greenhouses and stuff. I emailed them a few okay. weeks ago, so maybe All right. that's what it was. So that's what... Okay. I was just looking for them in the folder again. But they're going kind of behind the house. Yeah. Exactly. Like where those couple barns are going down Hadley Road. Or going down the the um, right away to cross the river where the power lines go. It's all far enough. I so can't even button ball, right? <laughs> oh, I didn't put anything in. Sorry. No, that's all right. The button ball stuff's in the APR one. Okay. And there's nothing. In that's why I was. Um, yeah, I can. Yeah, no, that's okay. Okay. The electrics on the other side of that dirt road right yeah not, not the okay yeah so i don't i'm know. having a hard time picturing where this is okay um hadley road yep what used to be telega farm and that dirt road that we just recently had um the electric company oh, okay to put the that, manhole yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, dirt that road way. going out there so there's the house that's kind of on um 47 in the corner of that dirt road yep. that access road there's the farmhouse there. There's a barn behind it. And then there's another barn. There it is. Yes. No, I do know that, that one. Okay. That's better. <laughs> that helps. Yep. Okay. Um, and it's going to be behind, you said it's behind the build, the current buildings, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't have a problem. I have with zero that. problems no, with that. Yeah. No, one needs to know. yeah, it's fine. And as long as you're saying that everyone else you've asked to sign off on it and that no one's raised any concerns. Yeah. Okay. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the request to put in the greenhouses for 375 Hadley Road. Uh, so, so moved. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is our bonfire permit request for the Sunderland Fire Department. Uh, they had a bonfire last year for the anniversary, and it was very well received, and they'd like to do it again this year. Uh, they're asking for basically our permission for the chief to give himself a permit. <laughs> Which always sounds fun. Um, any discussion on this? I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Beautiful. Um, in that case, I will entertain a motion to approve the chief's request for permission to give himself a permit. I motion that we allow a permit for the bonfire for the fire department. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Beautiful. All right, up to the fun part. Annual town meeting warrant first look. Yes. So, um, just gonna go through each article. If you have questions, stop me. Um, first article, standard uh, reports of the select board, boards, committees. Yep. Article two is compensation for elected officials. Yep. 
Article 3 is the operating budget. Article 4 is the capital budget. Article 5 is prior year bills. Article 6 is if we're making any transfers to capital stabilization. Uh, Article 7 is if we're making any transfers to general stabilization. Uh, Article 8 is the accumulated second vacation buyback for um, Sunderland Elementary teachers and staff. Um, 9 and 10 are CPA articles. 11 is... Sorry, quick question before we keep going. Um, 6 and 7 were for moving money to capital stabilization and general stabilization. Yes. I don't believe we're doing that this year. Does that mean that those articles just don't exist, or they exist, but they're going to have a $0 amount on them? No, we can remove them. There's, okay. Yeah, I just I put them in as placeholders yep. in yep. case that was something we were going to be doing. Gotcha, but gotcha. if you want me to remove them now, or when we vote to add things, we can just not, not add that one. Beautiful. Um, and just for my own brain, if we do that, does all the rest of the articles move up two numbers, or do... Okay. Yeah. I, I assume so, but I figured I'd yeah. do that. All right, sorry, go ahead. Um... So one of the CPA articles is for a multi-use path, and the other one is for um, for Graves Memorial Library uh, preservation. Uh, article 11 is the administrative article uh, for CPA. Um, article 9 is the zoning bylaw change um, for energy storage facilities. Nine. Nine. Is that not right? Uh, no, I'm just, we went, we did, okay, oh, just added. yeah, <laughs> I went 10, 11, 9, huh? 10, 11, so 12, and then the next one is 13, which is structure conversion, another zoning bylaw change. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm going to have to renumber. 14 is the revolving fund limits. Um, 15 is the citizen petition to allow 16 and 17 year olds to vote in local elections. And then the rest are the consent articles. All right. Um, I, we can either go through and vote to add some now, I can redo take out general and capital stabilization transfers and then we can vote next week um we can do the takeouts later if we want to right? yeah. yeah yeah we can do it i can leave them in for now so i think almost everything that you said in there is what we do every year it's all normal stuff the only thing that's different this year is the citizens petition right yeah zoning articles aren't every year but yeah okay yep. fair enough um do we want to just handle those couple of once talk about those quickly and then if we're all on the same page on those two or three articles i think the rest of it's just what we talk about no i don't want to <laughs> have the general you know budget in the the in the or something like that um does everyone feel comfortable with with that mm -hmm. okay um so let's start with the citizens petition thank you for being here jess so if you have questions we can ask you um i'm all for it in fact i think i was probably the first name on that list when you came around with the thing. Um, I think it's a great idea. I have two 15 year olds who will be 16 soon and will be 17 soon thereafter, um, who I would love to see be more involved in local politics. Um, the part of the idea behind this is also to encourage uh, participation from like frontier students. And that I believe just said that she had talked to a, a teacher at frontier who was interested in sort of wrapping this into part of a civics lesson and encouraging students to go vote and whatnot. So um, if we want to have well-engaged 18-year-olds voting in elections in the future, the place to start is with 15 and 16-year-olds being involved in, or 16 and 17 year olds being involved in this kind of thing. So I'm all for it. That's my two cents. Do, you have a Do we know of any other areas, any other towns that allow 16 and 17-year-olds? Please are some, right? Cambridge, and I think Brookline also already has it. Right now, there, so when we vote this in locally, what we're actually voting to do is, town meeting is to be voting to instruct all of you to send a letter to Natalie and Joe to then file a bill. The state legislature has to approve it before we can actually put it into action locally. Mm -hmm. um, there are several other municipalities that have filed their own legislation and the subcommittee is just not acting on them. So the people in those other towns, that includes 
Northampton, I'm, um, I've been working with them locally. Um, Boston, I think Lexington has just passed it. Southboro, there's these other towns around the state. Um, they're excited about the optics of, because we're trying to do this with all four Union 38 towns right now, all in parallel in, in one spring. So they're excited about the idea of having additional towns piling in to, create, to increase the pressure on the legislature to actually act on it. Okay. And you said that, that Cambridge and Brookline, you said, already have it in place? Cambridge has had it for a long time, yeah, okay. and I recently heard but didn't verify that Brookline also okay. has it. So we know at least one town that has successfully implemented yes. it, yes. plus a bunch of or that are waiting. And okay. Brattleboro, Vermont, and Newark, New Jersey. Yeah. Okay. And there's a wonderful national organization, Vote 16 USA, that um, is a national campaign that's got lots of materials. FAQs and everything, if you'd like to look at their stuff online. Wonderful. Vote16USA. .USA or vote6usa.com or something like that? I think it's .org. Vote16 vote has a number, USA.org. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I will be bringing a resolution to the Joint School Committees on April 9th, um, asking the school committees to weigh in as a piece of evidence we can present at town meeting. That people focused on education and on young people in our towns think this is a good idea. Great. Dan, any questions? Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's I think it's a good idea. Okay. Crystal, anything else you want to do? No. Okay. Jeff, any uh, questions on that? Nope. Okay. Do we want to vote on that or do we want to go through a couple more and then vote as a... I would like to not vote on this. I want some time to um, look up that website yep. and you know just do some research on my own before yeah, and we don't need to vote on it tonight anyway so. no nope, that's probably fine um all right so let's go to the two zoning ones then those are the other sort of odd man out ones you want to give us any context on this jeff i have not, not looked at these yet so one of them is this, the library right and we have talked about that in the past, right? The library? Oh, no, that's hard. That's, that's CPA. Yeah. I'm not talking the wrong um, So one is uh, creating zoning for standalone battery energy storage facilities. Um, my understanding is that case law has said that if you allow solar and you don't have zoning for standalone battery energy storage facilities, then they can be put anywhere you have solar, is sort of what the state said. Gotcha. So the planning board um, is amending the, the zoning bylaw to add the definitions. And um, I'll, I'll send you the uh, all the changes. I have that from, um, I didn't realize that, that this wasn't like the second one and didn't actually explain everything that was going on. So I'll, I'll get you that information. Okay. And the um, general idea is that, the, that they're limit. So you're saying they're limiting it so that anyone who puts solar in can't turn their backyard into a battery storage facility. Right. Okay. That, that makes sense. Um, well, I, I, I don't, to be fair, I don't think that it was a back, it was more of a commercial solar issue. But You know, like near the school, like the solar yeah, field yeah. type thing yeah. versus yeah. your backyard yeah. solar. Um, and then the next article, which I think should be 13, um, is a change to the structure conversion bylaw, um, basically allowing more units for older buildings. And we have some older housing stock in town mm -hmm. that is hard to redevelop um, because there's lots of property, um, but developing a single family home or less than four units just isn't profitable um, for developers. And so the planning board wanted to try and find a way to allow some redevelopment of these properties. So they're limiting it to um, buildings of at least 10,000 gross square feet. Um, so it's not just any property. But, um, and you said that they're, they're reducing the size of each unit a little bit? Is that what you're saying? 
Mm, we'll no. What's the... So the existing building, it's 10,000 square feet. It allows... Right. So, so right now, the zoning bylaw doesn't allow us to have more than four units on a lot. Oh, no. Okay. No so that's the... More. Okay. So right. this would be... So up increasing the, the number of units. Yep. And that, for these... And know. how does that work with, like, the apartment complexes? I'm assuming there's different regulations that way? Is it... So... I think it, mm, at least... I, I don't know. I believe... I believe Cliffside and... Um, Chicago, Chicago. were yeah. built before zoning. Or before there was... <laughs> before yeah. local zoning, at least. So... Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking we have yeah. a new one down there by the Amherst border. I have to assume that they had to. They, they had a they had a comprehensive permit. That was a 40B. So okay. That, that, that so wasn't allowed by zoning, but right. because we didn't have 10, percent they were allowed to do it. Okay, that, that's the thing. Yeah. I was for. Okay. Um, do, are they setting a new limit, six or something like that, or just taking the limit away? Uh, eight uh, to eight. eight. Okay. So, could you think of any place in town that's an example of where this could yeah, happen? How many, how many buildings actually apply? Right. <laughs> So the assessors uh, put together a list uh, for the planning board. Don't know how many um, are of 10,000 square feet, but the apartment buildings would be one example. Um, I believe Cozy Corner would be another example. Um, it's hard to know what was built before 1978 and 10,000 square feet. But Is that the way the, the, it's written? It has to be built before 78 yep. and have 10,000 square feet. Yeah. So technically they could take like where the laundromat is next to the old 7-Eleven. That building's probably 10,000 just as an example. They could take that building and turn it into eight apartments. I don't know if that's right. That's probably not. That's commercial zone. I don't know if they would let them do it there, would they? Well, they could do. Well, no, I'm just trying to think yeah, of, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. In districts where allowed. Yeah. Um, so I think you can, maybe you can do that in a commercial. I don't. Yeah. yeah and, or maybe a mixed use. But no, this is for. This is not mixed use. This is structure conversion for multifamily. Yeah, I'm having a hard time thinking of any other property other than Koji Corners <laughs> in town that this would apply to. And if this is just trying to get a cozy corner, well, this building, if we oh, moved true. and wanted to we sell this for redevelopment, units is all we could do here. Is what you saying? Yeah. Mm. Um, right, but it, that doubles it, right? Because right now you could only do four without right. doing well, this. But we also have the the new changes in place, which again, there, there's a mechanism for larger scale projects. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure we want to take away the requirement of them doing that kind of a thing when we're talking about a large-scale project like this. Do we want to make it... Because what it sounds like is there's already a way of doing this. We're just making it easier to do it. Well, the comprehensive plans, I mean, we did a friendly 40B for that one, and we yeah. did a forced 40B for the other one. So it's basically saying 40B is the only way you can do it. So this is saying at least you get some more flexibility for buildings that have footprint already. Right? That's really what it says. Yeah. So my, my concern, I guess, is that four units in a building is already starting to get to be a big project. It's already starting to become a large development thing. And if we're talking about more than that, do we really want to make that not have to go through the steps that it needs to go through in order to... What's I mean, I, I, I'm saying this from a position of no, somebody no, who does no. not actually understand how it currently yeah, works. Yeah, I'm just yeah. asking, like, is yeah. this something that we so want to make it easier yeah, for them? I'll, I'll right? see if the, somebody from the planning board can come to the next meeting and talk about that would it. Be one. Yeah, that'd be that would be, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. helpful, and I'll get as much information as I can before Excellent. that. Excellent. So I'm sure that there's, a, there's a legitimate reason for why. I just, I'd like to know that before I say, yes, let's go ahead yeah, and do that. Do that. Um, especially if it is that there's only one building in town and it's Cozy Corners, and this was brought to, to us <laughs> by the people trying to develop Cozy Corners or something like that. I'm not saying that's the case, but like, you know, I have questions and I'd like to answer them before I sign off on that. Okay. Um, so those were, the, those were the three that we had that were sort of off the beaten path. Um, Dan, Crystal, is there anything from the rest of the articles that you wanted to go over? As far as I'm concerned, the rest of them are the same as they were last year and every year before then. Yeah. No, I'm okay. Okay. 
Um, so it sounds like, Jeff, we have a couple of ones that we want to wait till next week to you know think about and or have planning come in or something like that. Um, so if you guys are okay with that, let's just wait until then, get our answers questions or our questions answered, and then we can vote on the the whole slate. Does we have work? to do each one separately, right? Well, okay, but we can go yeah. through the process and vote on them. I mean, if you guys want to start going through and doing well, something, you can. But. No, I mean, obviously, you know, one and the, you know, the, there's a lot of these articles we can, you know, kind of just move right through real quick. You know, the salaries and all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, we can wait. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Do you have a preference? Yeah, I can, I can go either way. Okay. Are you good to have a little for me, frankly? But yeah, then then we'll wait. Okay. Yeah, Jeff, if, you, if you're comfortable with it, we'll wait until next week to vote on them. Um, and by then, we'll, we'll have a chance to check out the Vote 16 USA website and also um, maybe get some answers from the, the planning. Yeah, planning board. To vote your recommendations or to vote to add them to the warrant? Both. Okay. Uh, can we do both at the same time? Right. Um. You can. Yeah. You need two separate. You need two separate. I mean, you, I probably. move to add Article One to and recommend. You probably want two separate motions. Well, we can go right Article One all. motion, motion Article Two motion, motion Article Three motion, motion yeah. that kind of thing. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, let, let's plan on having that be next week, um, and that'll give us a chance to look at the couple of ones that we want to look at. Okay. Beautiful. That is it for our new business. First piece of old business is going to be our operating budget review. So our operating budget is in better shape this Excellent. week. If it's um, in worse shape, I have questions. <laughs> we managed to get the gap down to about 87000 which is not what you have because mm. I realized that um, it is... I still had some of the library's expanded budget numbers in there, so I changed. I mean, that was three thousand dollars in savings. But um, okay, what this result, this change is a result of um, adding about forty-five thousand in local receipt, estimated local receipts. Um, we also reduced the grant writing consulting um, line item 2000, the professional development line item um, about 1100 and uh, town administrator expense by about 600 because we've not fully expended those in, in recent memory. Um, reduced the energy contingency 2500, so that went from 10,000 to 7,500. Um, we have not touched the energy contingency yet this year. Uh, I mentioned the library. Uh, and then cut the reserve fund in half from 50000 to 25000 um, Haven't touched that so far either. So with that, we have a, a gap of about 87000 And that's with using how much free cash? That's with using 141515 Which leaves us how much in rollover? So if we use that, we are also planning on using 50000 in free, uh, free cash to OPEB and 55000 for the retirement. Yep. Um, that would leave us 225204 Okay, so we still have some wiggle room in there still. Okay. So you're saying if we if we were to just close the gap the rest of the way with free cash, we would end up with what 140 or something like that. Yep, and there are ways to make that better. Um, you know, we we can't do OPEB from ARPA, but we could do the retirement from ARPA, and then that puts 55,000 back in the free cash. Okay. Um, so there, we don't have to use free cash, I guess, for, for those things. Probably. I know that retirement thing eventually will no longer be through attrition, right? As people, you know, it's kind of, grandfather's probably not the right word, but. 
Yeah, I think um, this current contract is the first one that doesn't have it, right? Right, so anybody who was hired a year and a half ago does not have this entitlement. Okay, we'll so it's a long time then before. It's, it's been 30 years for it to completely. It's been disappear. decreasing, right? The people who are retiring now are not getting the same benefits as the people who retire in 20 years? I believe it's been oh, okay. consistent up until okay. hiring a year and a half ago. All right, so do we really want it to be taking that from ARPA because in the future we're not going to have ARPA to be taking this from. I think we need to I think it yes. figure I, I, out I mean, how to pay for it. Well, and really, from my perspective, it's the question of do we leave $50,000 in ARPA and then by the end of the year have to figure out how to spend it, or do we spend it on something we know we have that needs to be spent and save free cash, which then rolls over year to year to year to year and doesn't expire. That's sort of where I'm at at this point. If, if we had two, three more years of ARPA before we had to spend the money, I'd be much less apt to want to do that. But at this point, I'd rather see the ARPA money get spent and have free cash going into next year's. On something we but, know we need to spend it on. Yeah. Um, and yes, I totally am on the same page in general. I don't like to, to, to pay for revolving things with non-revolving money. Um, but this is a situation where the revolving money is going to go away in December if we haven't spent it by then. And as much as I'd love to be able to tell the departments in town, hey, we got extra money in ARPA, come ask for your wildest dreams, I'd much rather spend it on things we really need and have more money for next year in the free cash. You know? but, I mean, we don't have any choice on that cost, right? I mean, the, yeah. Correct. It's, it's, yeah. it's fixed. Correct. Our faculty <laughs> is small enough and young enough, this is not an annual occurrence. Okay. It's, it's likely that it'll be another two, three, four years before this happens. Okay, that is good contact. Thank you. Um, and yeah, and, and I would feel worse about it if this was a contractual, like, or not, it is contractual, but I mean, if this was a every year for the next 10 years, we're paying $50,000 every single year for this. Yeah, I mean, that would be different. This is it more just of a, depends on who retires, yeah. basically. Yeah. So I think the only other thing that I would point out on that is that I believe that, and Peter and Jessica, correct me if I'm getting this wrong, but I believe that, that there was a, the select board wanted it as a Warren article, not just because it wasn't in the school's budget. I, don't, I forget there was another reason. <laughs> not, I think. Um, I, think the, I think the reasoning always was that, I mean, it came up sort of because they didn't really trust the school committee to be honest about the year-to-year -year sort of budget change. And so if there was a, if it was part of the school budget and you had a year like this where the number was unusually high, then that would be the starting point for the overall budget next year when it really shouldn't be because this is a number mm -hmm. that has got a huge amount of fluctuation. In it. Some mm -hmm. years the number is zero, okay? And, and um, so that the idea of Pulling it out and doing it separately really was just a way of, of having a little more control over um, this not sort of disappearing into the school budget and then you, you know, you sort of forget about it and then, you know, they're getting an increase over an inflated number. It's not a recurring number. So okay. that's where it got started and then people, and that's been a number of years. Uh, and then it's been like, yeah, you know, this week, yeah, we, we have to give it some visibility, but the real, I think the real motivation was, no, just so we make sure we're getting honest year-by-year -year comparisons on the school budget without these, yes, you've got it some years and other years you don't, which... Well, you know. and, and the, the inverse of this year, you don't have any money there, the budget's this much, and next year you come in and it's in there and we're asking you, why did your budget go up $100,000 when nothing changed? Right. It, it, it's on for both ends. It's, yeah, I it's, mean, there's lots of things that are... You know, not exactly even year to year, but they're not of this magnitude. Yeah. And so, it, it, from a budgeting point of view, it it gives clarity, mm. and that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you pay it. I mean, it's got to be paid one way or another. But it's a question of how do we yeah. do it so that we all understand it without having to sort of, you know, go through a bunch of sort of mathematical stuff each year to try to figure out what the increase really is because we've got the one-time things coming in. Well, no, and, and it's certainly from a select board perspective, when we're looking at budget stuff, 
we're looking at five years, ten years of budget information, and if we see it going up and down like that, it makes it a little harder for us to figure out what's actually going on. So I, I certainly appreciate keeping it like that. Um, yeah. One more piece of context. Um, this is a particularly high year for this type of item. We've got two teachers retiring who are both not only very long serving but very dedicated and don't take lots of sick time. <laughs> so usually this benefit maxes out around thirty thousand dollars per person. So for this to be fifty five this year is probably I would hope the highest we're gonna see. For a while, yeah. Okay. It would be much more common for it to be more like fifteen thousand dollars in one year. Now, in a perfect world, the money for this would already be stashed away somewhere. It would be accounted for in budgeting. It'd be, oh well, we didn't. This this teacher didn't spend this this year, so we're going to put that money in the side in this account somewhere. So that when they retire, it's already sitting there waiting for them. That'd be a perfect world. <laughs> we don't live in that world. Here we are. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I would love to see this be something where we are building up towards it for each person as we get closer to it. And so this isn't a thing where we hit one year, and because really this fifty-five thousand isn't fifty-five thousand for four year twenty-five. It's fifty-five thousand for the last thirty years that we've been slowly accumulating a debt and then paying it off all at once. Um, so that's a whole other conversation about how we do things. But um, in terms of this year, given that it's an unusual year, given that not just in terms of this, but our whole budget is having an unusual year, I would push to use ARPA funds for this, but again, that's me. Any thoughts, Crystal? <laughs> so if we use ARPA funds, it's not a warrant like right. they want it to be, or, you know, that the request has been yeah. in the past, so... So yeah, so we can't make it a warrant. We, it, it doesn't make sense. We don't need this warrant if we use our part, basically. I mean, there's no reason that you can't do a warrant article for our book. And make people vote on it. You don't. <laughs> so, the in my mind, the risk is that somebody says, "Why is there a warrant article for fifty-five thousand for retirement, but you gave the school hundred thousand for Windows without a warrant article?" Like. The, that is the risk. But you could do a warrant article. Or also that it gets voted down, and then <laughs> we're in trouble. I mean, that, that, that's the risk of any warrant article for this. But um, I personally, I, I, I would lean towards, if we're going to use ARPA for it, we just do that outside of town meeting because that's our prerogative, and that's how we've been doing all along, and we're not trying to set a precedent otherwise. That would be my, my position. I just, Here. just Con Conway had a, they're actually in a worse situation. I think it was last year when they had, I think four teachers retire and they had a, this item, the bill was in the vicinity of a hundred grand and they basically just went straight to ARPA and took it out of that because yeah. you know, yep. that was, and they just, and as far as I know, they just did it, they didn't put it in town meeting. Yeah, well, no. It if also, it's ARPA, I don't think with it we want to. But also from a, sort of, from a, a moral it. standpoint, the ARPA money is here to help lessen the blow of the pandemic to the towns. And I'm not going to pretend like teachers retiring is not related to the pandemic. I'm not saying these particular teachers are retiring because of the pandemic, but that it, the argument could very likely, very easily be made that we are seeing higher retirement than we would necessarily have seen without a pandemic. And so using some ARPA money to pay for the fallout of the pandemic would be a justifiable argument to make. Mm -hmm. In terms of ARPA, in general, we've had people come to us with requests. So if we do decide that we want to go that direction, that would be asking Darius to come to us to ask for that, right? Or would it be Ben? No, I mean, uh, I think that this is a, so the, the school committee came to us and said, this is an expense. The select board in the past has said, please don't put it in your budget. So I think you can make... We could choose to... You're choosing not to do a Warren article and doing ARPA instead. They asked for a Warren article. Okay. I just want to make sure we're doing it right because the last thing I want to do is have someone say, hey, the rest of us had to ask for that. Why are you giving it without having asked? I just want to make sure we're, we're covered there. Um, so, okay, in that case, if you guys are in agreement, I would entertain a motion to spend $55,000 in ARPA money to pay for the teacher retirement. Make a motion to spend fifty-five thousand pay for the teacher two teachers retirement. I'll second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. All right. All right. So that takes care of that.
that's 55,000. That closes the gap to more like 27 or something like that. 25, 30-ish. No. It no, this is not operating. No, this is a time effort. It increases Wish it was. free cash. <laughs> it increases but it increases free our free cash, cash. yeah. Yeah, um, free cash to about 275. Okay. 280. So, in effect, it does give us more ability to pay for the operating budget. Okay. Um, so, I guess from where I'm at, the operating budget at this point, unless Jeff thinks there's more that we can trim out of it without starting to have real effects, um, is about as trim as it's going to get. And I would be comfortable with making up the different set of free cash. Um, Yes, we're going heavier free cash into the operating budget than we have in years past, but as Peter brought up last time, we don't have a huge $200,000 chunk going out into capital expenses. Um, so we're likely going to end up with a similar amount of free cash left over, but it's just all going into operating rather than going into operating and capital. Okay. Any thoughts? So that would leave us with about 193000 in free cash. Which is about what we ended up last year after we put money into stabilization, stabilization and budget. So, so yeah, I mean, I, would I like to see more? Of course. But this is not that year. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we'd still have total cash reserves above 8%. Yeah, because we, we still have the general stabilization fund, which we haven't touched in quite a while, and we did put money in last year into that. Um, so, uh, Do you need any kind of vote on, on that, or just it, if we kind of direct in that direction, you'll... Yeah, no, I'll, I'll come back uh, with a balanced budget, and I'll send it out to you and the finance committee and what feedback we get. Beautiful. All right. I know I'm still new at this, but both last year and this year, I started the year being like, there's no way we're going to be able to balance this budget, and then we always end up doing it. So I should probably next year just assume that we will figure out how to do that. We have to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, no, no choice. No choice. No, <laughs> oh, we can go. We can file chapter nine here. Or chapter <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Sounds like we are on good shape on the budget. Thank you very much for all the hard work on that, Jeff. We really appreciate it. Um, next up is flex board updates. Um, I don't have anything myself. Crystal? I don't have anything either. No, oh, I don't have anything. It's three. <laughs> Wonderful. In that case, we are moving on to town administrator updates. Jeff? Yeah. Um, just clarifying that if I do find savings elsewhere in the budget, you want me to... Oh, yes, absolutely. Right. Okay. Um, free cash is going to be the last resort. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, and then the only other thing I had is a we're getting ready to send out the town meeting postcard, so I just wanted to confirm April 26th, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. at the Sunderland Elementary School. Everybody's good with that. Okay. Excellent. Beautiful. That's all I got. All righty. Any public comment while we're here? Beautiful. Thank you both for showing up. We appreciate having you here to, to bring context to all our discussions. Um, in that case, seeing nothing else on the agenda, at this time I would entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three nothing. It is 7.13. You can take us on out. <laughs>